Hello, and welcome to another video in this optician course. Today, we're going to cover optician lesson seven, optical science of light. So we're gonna go over the basics of light, understanding light hitting an object, refraction, and the types of lenses um, and what light does to them. So let's start with the basic understanding of light. Light behaves in three different ways, like a particle, like a wave, and it is wavy in nature. Two spectrums to know are electromagnetic spectrum, which is a group of different types of radiation, like gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, infrared rays, radar, FM, TV, shortwave, AM, all of these are considered electromagnetic spectrum. Visible spectrum is the wavelengths of light we can see, which makes up only a tiny part of the full electromagnetic spectrum. The wavelengths of the visible spectrum is measured in nanometers or billionth of a meter. The vision spectrum spans only a few hundred nanometers. To be specific, we can only see the wavelengths ranging from 380 to 760 nanometers. And this is information that is going to be on the ABO exam. So you have to know that visible spectrum, which is this right here, is measured in nanometers and it starts from 380 and it ends in 760 nanometers. This is the light rays that we can see. Colors in the visible spectrum, red is the longest wavelength and violet is the shortest. An easy way to remember all the colors in the visible spectrum is this acronym ROYGBIV, which stands for the colors in the visible spectrum, which goes from the largest, which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and ending with the shortest, which is violet. Ultraviolet rays, you can't see ultraviolet rays, but it'll come up a lot in your profession as an optician because the sun is the primary source of UV rays, which come in following three types. UVC is completely absorbed by the atmosphere. UVB is the most damaging to our cells, causing cataracts and skin cancer. UVA, also called black light, causes tanning and thickening of the skin and can contribute to cataracts in vision. So the protective lenses you'll recommend in sunglasses block both UVB and UVA rays. Now let's take a look at what happens to an object when light and what happens to light hitting an object. Excuse me. Angle of incidence is the angle at which the light wave hits the surface or the object. Angle of reflection is the angle at which the light wave bounces off an object. So angle of incidence is this purple thing and um, and angle of uh, bouncing off is the red one, angle of reflection. Specular reflection is light bouncing off highly reflective object, which is smooth. So as you can see in this example, smooth surface is specular reflection. Diffuse reflection or diffuse scattering is light bouncing off less reflective object, usually not or less smooth. Like in this example, as you can see, light angle of incidence was fine, but angle of reflection turned into a diffused reflection or a scattering diffuse reflection because the object wasn't as smooth. What is this relating to eyes? When the surface is less smooth, the reflective rays of light bend very randomly, causing a lot of glare. This occurs on irregular reflective surfaces, such as an eye that just had LASIK surgery, a very dry or dirty contact lens, or a very dry cornea. Refraction. 
Refraction is the bending of light as it passes through a substance. Both natural eyes lens and eyeglass lens bend light, so it hits the right spot on the retina for image processing. What is the law of refraction? Light slows when it moves from a less resistant or rare medium like air to a denser medium like water. And it travels faster when it moves from a denser medium to a rare medium. Similarly, light rays bend when they leave the air rare and pass through a curved lens, which is denser. For example, when light travels through a plastic lens, it will bend and slow down as it continues to go through the plastic. If it travels through an even denser lens material, such as a high index plastic, it will slow down much more and bend even more. That's why uh, high index lenses can be thinner. Index of refraction. The higher the index of refraction of a material, the more the light will bend. Benefit of this in eyeglass prescription is that high index plastic materials make lenses look thinner. With a higher index of refraction, light is bent more efficiently. Therefore, it requires less material to achieve the eyeglass prescription power, making the lens much lighter. Snell's law. This law allows us to determine the angle at which light will bend as it passes from one substance to another. All we need to know is the refractive indexes of both substances. For, ex for instance, if we know the refractive index of air, which is always 1, and the refractive index of the polycarbonate lens is 1.584, and um, glass is i think 1.53 we can then figure out exactly how far light will bend as it travels through the lens so you will basically plus light coming from air which is one and the refractive index of the material of the lens combine that to get snell's law disadvantages of higher index lenses though advantages of thinner and lighter far outweigh disadvantages, there are a couple drawbacks. Since high index lens is thinner, the central optical zone of the lens is more compressed. This means that there's a smaller area in the center of the lens where the sharpest vision can occur. If you're wearing high index lenses and you move your eyes outward toward the sides of the lenses, things will not be as sharp as if they are as when you are looking outward from plastic lenses. So one of the disadvantages, the peripheral vision won't be as crisp as in other lens materials. Dispersion is dispersion is high index lenses can also cause a high degree of light dispersion, meaning that the colors of the rays passing through the lenses separate as a result. Some people see colors around images, an effect we call chromatic aberration, but this can be eliminated with anti-reflective coating. This whole thing will be on the ABO exam. What you have to know about dispersion is that it is the high degree of light dispersion, meaning you'll see colors, you know, in front or around the images you're seeing. And this is an effect we call chromatic aberration. The less the chromatic aberration, the better. And uh, high index lenses have some of it. Uh, but this, this can be corrected with anti-reflective coating. So you should not uh, be discouraged to recommend high index lenses. How to measure dispersion? We can measure the amount of dispersion produced by different lenses. We call this measurement of the ab value of a lens. The lower the ab value, the higher the amount of light dispersion of that lens material. And the higher the ab value, the lower the amount of light dispersion of that lens material. Some people prefer to this number as new value and constringent. But ab value will come in the ABO, so you should know that. 
Now let's move on to the types of lenses. Prism is a big one. Light passing through a prism will always bend toward the base of the prism. So this is the apex, this is the base, and this is light coming in. And it is bending toward the base, as you can see. A plus, so there are plus lenses and minus lenses. A plus lens is made up of two prisms placed base to base, as you can see here. A minus lens is made up of two prisms placed apex to apex, as you can see here. This is why plus lenses are always thicker in the center and minus lenses are always thicker at the edges. A plus lens is also called a convex lens. The light going through a plus lens will correct the vision of a hyperopic or far-sighted person because the light will converge sooner and focus onto the retina of a short hyperopic eyeball. So a plus lens is also called a convex lens. And, and what it does is that it corrects hyperops or farsighted people who have a shorter eyeball so the light entering ends up beyond the retina and so in an early age process of accommodation naturally brings the light back and to focus on the retina and convergence which is the the inward of eyes for near objects um, also happens but as we age both natural process of accommodation and natural convergence decreases um, so therefore we need convex lenses to help uh, correct hyperopia. A minus lens is also called a concave lens. A minus lens bends the light less so the light converges farther back in the eye reaching the retina of a nearsighted person whose myopic eyeball is longer than normal. So concave lenses help myopia or nearsightedness who have a longer eyeball so light doesn't hit the retina and stops before it. But when light enters through a concave lens, it corrects the light and it converges farther back in the eye. Vergence describes how light rays diverge, spread apart, or converge, come together. So in a convex lens, after going through a convex lens, light converges before it reaches the retina of a normal length eyeball. We call the image created by a plus lens a real image. In a concave lens, after going through a concave lens, light rays diverge and focus farther out than they normally would because their eye is long and it, it needs light all the way to hit and the retina. And we call this the image created by a minus lens or virtual image. So convex converges and concave diverge the light more. Some lens material and lens types. Planar lens, if a surface of one side of the lens is flat, the power at that surface is planar. So here you can see a lens that is a, con a planar convex lens. So from this side, it's a plus lens. And from this side, it's planar. A biconvex lens at the front and back surface of lens are both convex. So both of these are plus lenses. Biconcave lens at the front and back surface of a lens are both concave. This lens is called bioconcave. As right here you can see, this is minus on both sides. Meniscus lens has one convex and one concave side. Meniscus lenses can minimize distortion or blur in images, especially if the lens power is very high. A meniscus lens that's thinner in the center part is the periphery is called a minus meniscus lens. A meniscus lens that's thicker in the center than it is than in the periphery is called positive meniscus 
lens. So as you can see right here, thicker in the middle, it's positive meniscus. Thinner in the middle, it's men negative meniscus. Measuring negative and positive powers. Based on prescription, some plus lenses are more plus than others, and some minus lenses have more minus power than others. A diopter or diopter of sphere, also abbreviated as D, DS, SPH, or sphere, this unit of power describes how much convergence or divergence occurs when light goes through a lens. Prescriptions show number in units of diopter. Calculating vergence of light leaving lens. This is uh, the coming together convergence of spreading apart divergence of light rays. Now here's an important principle to remember. The vergence of light entering the lens added to the power of the lens itself will be equal to the vergence of light leaving the lens. So, vergence of light entering lens plus lens power equals vergence of light leaving the lens. Calculating focal length. Light going through a powered lens will focus behind the lens at a certain distance from the lens. Calculating this distance is the focal length. So once again, light going through a powered, powered lens will focus behind the lens at a certain distance from the lens. Calculating this distance is the focal length. So how far does the light go from the lens? That's the distance we're trying to measure. How to calculate inverse? We get this number by calculating the inverse of the power of the lens in meters. The inverse is one divided by the power of the lens. An example of plus convex lens uh, giving real image can be inverse of two. The It could be plus two and the power and half of that will equal 0.5 meters. And an example of minus concave lens giving virtual image can be inverse of negative two equals half of that which is one over two equals negative 0.5 in meters lens clock if a client doesn't know their lens power we can use a device called lens clock to measure it but we will measure both front surface and back surface of lens, and whatever the clock reads, we will then add both numbers to come up with the lens power. For example, if the front of the lens reads negative two, and the back of the lens is positive four, the total power of the lens is negative two plus four, which is two. So in this lesson, we learned a lot about light and understanding light hitting an object, refraction types of lens lenses we learned about convergence and divergence which is vergence and we learned about uh, how to calculate vergence and how to um, calculate the focal length which is basically an inverse of the power in a lens so if you like this lesson, please leave a thumbs up. And for future optician lessons and optician course, please subscribe. And if you need the notes, um, the text notes of this video, they will be in the link in the description. And